React Native Firebase is a combination of my two favorite systems, which is React Native by Facebook that allows us to build mobile applications using JavaScript and Firebase by Google, which brings lots of tools and functionality to those mobile applications. We'll be able to do things like push notifications, analytics, real-time databases, and I'm going to show you how to get this installed and up and running for your React Native project. We're going to take a look today at what Firebase is and how it works with React Native. We're also going to install it and set it up so that we can begin bringing in some of those features and functionality into our projects. My name's Adrian and I do videos around design and development. So if you like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe and let's just get started. The first thing we're going to do is combine React Native with Firebase by installing a library which does all the heavy lifting for us. It's called React Native Firebase, which is simple enough, but they've recently upgraded their documentation and library from version 5 to version 6. This means some of the setup and tooling has changed a little bit, but we'll go through this and have a look at how to get started using their new configuration and tools. When we go into their documentation over here, then we can see we have two options. The first is getting started with React Native Firebase for a new project. And the second is if you already have an existing project, we can also link it in. We'll have a look at both of these. For a new project, if we have a look, we can preset a lot of the configuration by running npx react native community and using their CLI to use one of the template files for react native Firebase. And this should set up most of the configuration for us. Let's copy this over and give it a test. Here I've got an empty terminal and I'm going to copy over this content. And over here, I'm going to give my project a name. In this case, I'm going to call it React Native Firebase. Let's put that in. And this should start installing everything we need. If you're running iOS, you'll then need to browse into the iOS folder and run pod install with a dash dash repo update. This will make sure that the pods for React Native are installed. In our case, we're going to be using Android, so we don't have to manually put this step in. But once we swap over to a Mac, we'll need to do this in order to get it running. Next, we can take a look at adding all the credentials we need to connect our Firebase to our Android application. So let's select that step over here. What we'll need to do is we'll need to go into the Firebase console now and grab a copy of the Google services.json. We'll be using this for the project. Here's a link to the Firebase console. So let's open that up. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to have a project that we select over here. And we'll need to select the export to Android option here to get those details. So let's jump over here in our console. We don't have a project for this yet, so I'm going to create a new one. And for this project, I'm just calling this React Native Firebase. We'll hit continue and we'll just allow everything to stay as default. We'll set this up with a new account and we'll call this React Native Firebase. Let's save this, set up the location here. In our case, it's Australia and confirm for all the requirements that are needed. This will create our project in the background. Over here, we can see that Hyper has finished installing the project. So we can browse into this now, which is over here. Let's CD here into React Native Firebase. This is ready to begin to be used. And once we finish this configuration, we can pull in this JSON so that we can register our application with it. Here for registering the application, we need to give it a package name and a nickname as well as a uh, SHA-1 certificate sign. So that's ready to go now. We can see it's here in our recent projects. We can now go into the settings over here for our project settings. 
and we can pull a copy of the Android configuration. In here, we'll create something simple like maybe React Native Firebase. And we'll just do a simple uh, com and maybe a U over here. We can call this React Native Firebase. And this section here for the certificate, we're not using, but if you have one, you can put one in for yourself. Let's click register app and this will start loading in the background. Once it's done, we'll have a copy of the Google services JSON that we can put into our file. So let's download this over here. Great. And let's open up our project now in VS code and put this file in so that it can be used. Let's follow the instructions and copy this file straight into the directory here for Android. I'm just going to move this over to the left a little bit here. And what we'll do is we'll just drag and drop it in this case. Now, what we're going to do is put it straight into Android app. And in here, we've got all the files, but we've also got that google-services.json that we'll be using. This will have all our keys and content that we need to use. And that should be all good now. So if we go back to our document over here, we can have a look at the next step, which is making sure that our configuration is using the latest Google services. We do this by browsing into Android build.gradle. And let's copy this path over here and copy over the syntax we want to put in the file. If we jump in here and go to the Android folder, and build a Gradle. Let's make sure that we're under build scripts and dependencies. So build scripts is here, dependencies is down here. And it looks like we already have a copy of the Google services 4.2. And that's probably because we've actually installed the template file, which has put a lot of this configuration in for us. The next step over here is to make sure that it's applied. And this might also be completed, but let's double check. This is an Android app build.gradle. So let's browse in there. Android app build.gradle. And what we'll do is we'll scroll down a little bit and have a look for this line of code. It should be just near the bottom here where the dependencies are normally. So in this case, it says, please add it to the very bottom of the file. So let's keep scrolling down and we can see that it's actually already there. That's great. The next is to run the project and for Android, that's all the configuration we need. So let's do that. I'm going to open up Android Studio and I'm going to head to our devices. We're going to just launch one of our emulated Android devices and then we're going to run the project and see how it's going. Let's jump in here and copy over this syntax, which is npx react native run dash Android, which is over here. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that you guys can see it. There we go. And let's make sure that it's switched on. That's a previous app we were working on before, but in this case, we're just going to run this specific app. We'll go into our project and we'll copy over this code npx react native run dash Android. Since this is a new project, it should take a little bit longer to build, but it should be done in no time when I fast forward this video for you. And there, it's up and running. With our application up and running, we can go to Firebase, to the analytics section over here, and we can see that our single use of React Native has popped up. So it's definitely connected now to Firebase, which is very cool. So let's take a look what this might look like on a Mac. Let's open up a new version here and type in React Native Firebase. And what we'll do is we'll jump into one of our React Native projects. Let's go into VS Code over here. And I think we were working on one somewhere over here. So let's open up what GitHub projects we currently have available. And if we browse into the root directory over here, we'll see that we have a few. In this case, we're going to use our NFC example. 
And for this one, we're not going to hit save or anything. We're going to open it up and we're going to go through the guide for React Native Firebase for iOS this time. So what we'll do is we'll go through the quick start once more and we'll make sure that we're using an existing project this time. For this, we'll jump in here and we'll do the first step, which is yarn add react native firebase forward slash app. We're going to copy this syntax and paste this here into our project. Let's close this app file off and open up the console. For our console, we'll just paste this straight in here and this should install as a dependency. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that you guys can see. Next, let's jump back in here and make sure that the pods are installed. So what we'll do is we'll copy the syntax to browse into the iOS folder and hit and install pods. So let's jump here back into our project and do that. We'll paste this syntax in and that should take effect. Finally, let's go back to our project over here and have a look at what's required next. So if we go to the iOS settings, we're going to also need a Google services info.plist here that will connect to our iOS version. And to do that, we're going to have to generate it again from the Google Firebase console. It'll be similar to the Android version. Well, we'll go to the project overview and we'll select iOS this time. So let's do that over here. We'll select the React Native Firebase option. And in here, we'll click for the options and the project settings. We'll scroll down here to the bottom. And because we already have one, we'll probably have to select add an app over here. In this case, we'll select to add an iOS app. And here we'll need the iOS bundle ID. If you don't know what that is, then it's just over here in Xcode. It's the bundle identifier. And this is the one we're currently using. So I'm just going to copy paste this into our project over here. And in this case, we're not going to give it a nickname or an ID because we don't have this registered on our app store yet. Let's click register app. And this should generate everything we need to download the configuration file. I'm just going to download it over here. Next, let's have a look at the step that we need to do. So in here, it says that we need to drag it into our application in Xcode and drag it into the folder on our project. So let's open up Xcode over here and we'll move this over to the right. What we'll do is we'll expand out the NFC project and go into the path. And then what we'll do is we'll drag over this new Google service plist and paste it straight in here. What we'll do is make sure that it's being referenced properly, which it is, and we'll hit finish on that. Great. There it is. Just a quick note, when you do copy it over, make sure that you tick this tick box here where it says copy items if needed. Otherwise, we can just continue on. If we have a look at the documentation over here, then we can see that the next step here is to, let's just hit cancel on this one over here, is to make sure that we're referencing the file. And to do this, we're going to have to browse into the iOS project name and to appdelegate.m. So we've got VS Code open over here. So we'll just do that. We'll jump in here and go to uh, appdelegates.m. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this line of code here to import Firebase. So let's copy that in over here. Great. Next, what we can do is scroll down and make sure that we also add this method. We place this in the did you finish with options method and we add this bool application line in. So if we scroll down here and have a look for that, here's our section for did you finish with options. And we're just going to add this straight underneath. So we'll paste this over here. Great. 
And in case we already have one, we could probably just copy these two lines in for the if statement. That way we don't have too much redundancy. So what we'll do is we'll just paste this straight in as the first section. Let's save and apply that and have a look at what's next. So that's it. We'll just rerun our iOS pods and we should be able to launch the project after this. So let's do that. And this time let's go to the pods folder and make sure we run repo dash update. We're already in the iOS folder from the last time we ran the pod install. So I'm just going to paste this line straight in and this should install anything else that's remaining. Great. Looks like that's done. So what we can do now is run our application. And to do that, we're just going to run npx react dash native run dash iOS, which is just over here. The first thing we'll do is just browse out of our iOS folder. So let's do that now. And let's run iOS now. Great. So it looks like that's running in the background and it's almost complete. Now we've installed it for both iOS and Android. I hope this video gave you a quick and easy way to get up and running with React Native Firebase. In the next one, we'll take a look at setting up Firebase with analytics for React Native. And this should give you a good way to be able to capture real-time statistics of how many people are using your application. I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.